Cheers. Oh, welcome, welcome to, to summer, summer Camp. Summer camp. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to our Patreon supporters. $5 a month gets you ad-free early access. $10 gets you access to our viewing parties. Thank you to all our supporters. We really appreciate it. We couldn't do it without you, so thank you. Second thing second, make sure to subscribe. Share, whole, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Letterboxd. So it wouldn't really be a Schmucks Run Amuck episode if we didn't talk about the ugh that is Jim Varney's Ernest P. Worrell. Know what I mean? This was my introduction. I did not grow yes. up in Southern California where apparently this was a commercial. Come down to Cerritos Auto Square. Calabunga, Vern Doggy. Cerritos Auto Square is having its big wipeout sale. Hey, Vern, your old buddy Ernest has just been immortalized. Ernest deal days at Cerritos Auto Square. All 15 dealers are under pressure. They've got to lower their prices. Meet their quotas. They're just a bunch of wimps. Now's the time to strike at the soft underbelly of Cerritos Auto Square. Cerritos Auto Square will even help you with custom financing if you happen to come up a little short on cash. Know what I mean? Cerritos Auto Square. Well, he did them all over. Okay. Maybe not in Arizona. Or I um, never noticed them. But yes, it was, it was, um, Cerritos Auto Square was the one that I remember from childhood. Wow. So you'd never, you had nothing, no, no context, not nothing. Aside from like knowing, MIAC that you had used in clips before, great. no clue what you're talking about. <laughs> Let's see how you like a little MIAC. MIAC. Yeah. For anyone who's, uh, unawares, Ernest right. started as a, purely as a, can you hear me now? Can you hear me right, now? Right, a commercial can you hear me now? You know, character. Karen from Progressive? No, what is it? Yeah, a Karen? Flo? Flo. 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 Flo from Progressive. Uh, but even less so, like, it wasn't um, for a specific campaign or something. Right. It was just, they did it for anyone who would pay them. Gotcha. And the gimmick was, he'd look straight into the camera, it was handheld, first person, and he's talking to Vern. Hey, oh. Vern, da, 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 whatever. I, I gotta tell you on this. And he's the annoying neighbor, basically, that knows everything and wants to talk to you. And oh my God. And he, Vern's always trying to escape. And the camera's like, <laughs> or whatever. That became huge. Right. Then these series of films started coming out. I mean, this is like the, the granddaddy of actors going out for commercials right. and turning it into insane. It's crazy. It, really crazy. Because not only like would that type of commercial gig be very lucrative for you, right? Because you get the royalties every time they play it and mm -hmm. you're the only one that can do it then. John Cherry wrote the stuff, started the commercials. They filmed them at his house. Wow. It started, it was like mom and pop, then directed all but one of the movies, I want to say. Wow. And wrote them all oh and Just... all of it. But he obviously, he's said... There is no Ernest without Jim Varney. Like, sure. I can't talk enough about how fabulous Jim Varney is. Sure. As just a comedian, uh, actor. We'll talk about it. He has such a range. Yes. But anyway, yes. Who could, like, what a wild, what a wild, what ride. A wild trajectory. Yeah. Ernest Scared Stupid. We're specifically going to talk about Ernest Scared Stupid tonight because it Eartha was. Kit. Oh. oh well, obviously Eartha Kitt. <laughs> obviously, but it was it was the one I watched the most. Okay, great. And the one I remembered the most from childhood. Great. Um, but I'm gonna talk generally about. Because um, you've rewatched all of them since now, or almost all of them. Dear God, not all of them. Oh. Some of the direct-to-video ones are. <laughs> Great. Better left in there. the past. But yes, it all started in 1987. Ernest goes to camp. Uh, I also watched this one, but having gone back and rewatched it, mm -hmm. it's more normal. Okay. The best part, and I now have watched the, a good chunk, the, the manageable ones. I still contend. I think Ernest Scared Stupid is the best one. It's surreal. Yep. It's bizarre. Yep. Great special effects. Yeah. Short and sweet. Holiday themed is Halloween. Of course, I'm going to love it. Fair. But yes, yeah, so Ernest goes to camp. Ernest saved C Christmas. He saved oh. Christmas. That was the next one. I watched okay. that one quite a bit. Great. Ernest goes to jail where there's a bad Ernest who oh. happens to be his twin. Oh, boy. Yes. Inside the lump was my twin. It was my twin. <laughs> I mean, it's not actually his twin. They just, it's that movie thing where it's, Oh my God, they look exactly the same. Oh, great. And switchy switchies, he's he's in jail. The other guy's trying to rob the bank that Ernest is the janitor at. 
blah, blah, blah. That one gets pretty wacky surreal. I mean, Ernest okay. is essentially like a superhero by the end of the movie. Oh, like wow. he gets exploded and he's like, oh, oh well. <laughs> well, again, cartoon character. <laughs> Live. <laughs> Fun fact. Okay. In between Ernest Saves Christmas and Ernest Goes to Jail, there's a short 22 minute, it's available on YouTube, mockumentary oh. called Ernest Goes to Splash Mountain because technically he's the first person to ride Splash Mountain. We learn about the ride, the man, and the meaning of courage as Ernest goes to Splash Mountain. Ernest Goes to Splash Mountain is a special television report. And now, reporting from Splash Mountain News Central, is veteran news anchor, Ralph Story. They made an entire, I really miss like the effort. They made an entire, they got a, a newscaster guy who's a real newscaster guy playing it totally straight. And he keeps going, Mr. Ernest P. Worrell. We are just minutes away from a feat some have compared with Alan Shepard's first ride into space or Neil Armstrong's walk on the moon. We're about to see daredevil consultant and world-renowned ride tester Ernest P. Worrell take the maiden voyage on Disneyland's newest attraction, Splash Mountain. And they're interviewing people at Disneyland Oh, it's going to be crazy. He's going to, you know, whatever. And it's this big build up to him riding Splash Mountain. Critter Country is the new name that's been given to the area that at the foot of Splash Mountain. It used to be called Bear Country, and you'll still see bears run around through here, but you'll also see a lot of uh, furried and uh, feathered friends which have moved into Critter Country. I had a great time. It was, it was like funny. I love that. They were playing it so straight. Right, right, right. This is a real of news event we are covering. Right. Cam, is Ernest really going to be the very first person on that Splash Mountain? That is correct, Ralph. And many tests of the ride have been conducted using empty logs and logs that have been weighted with sandbags to simulate the weight of people. But of course, as in any innovative technology, the real test only comes once a human is on board. As the first person to take on Splash Mountain, Ernest P. Worrell will become a part of this mountain's legend. About Ernest riding Splash Mountain. That's so very funny. Silly. So yeah, fun fact. He's the first person to ride Splash Mountain. That's how famous he was. Right, that is crazy. Disney. Disney was like, hey, we want you to do Ernest, a promo. Ernest, you need to be our... <laughs> Isn't that wild that stuff? That is wild stuff. But I do also miss... I feel like Disney did more of that. Mm -hmm. And it was endearing. Mm -hmm. More engaging as like humans. Yeah. You know, now it's just like so corporate. Yeah. I miss those days of the 90s of like Disney Channel behind the scenes where it's like, yeah. we're going to go talk to the Imagineers. Who are responsible for everything a guest sees, feels, smells, and experiences when they go into an attraction. Isn't that right? That's right. There's a tremendous amount of We're going to be showing the folks at home some of those lavish scenes and settings. About how they make this ride for the whatever. Yeah. Or like the episode of Boy Meets World where they go to Disney World and it was like stupid cross promotion yet also... Fun. Loving it. Yeah. Loving every second. Yeah. Yeah. There doesn't seem to be any sign of recovery. Oh, no. Well, I hope we haven't witnessed the demise of America's first splash or not. So then, but Ernest Scared Stupid was the last theatrical release. Oh, okay. Wow. So it's the because last... Because it didn't do well, right? It got bad reviews. Yeah, a little better than Bushwhacked. It's got a total of 17%. Great. On Rotten Tomatoes. Great. Then we get into the 90s direct-to-video Ernest. Mm. It's rough, guys. Oh, no. It's rough. Ernest Rides Again, which is basically an Indiana Jones okay. kind of we're searching for treasure vibes. Ernest Goes to School. Classic, you know. Animal House? Stand and deliver. No, it was oh. like school, like high school. Oh, got you. But he wasn't like an inspirational teacher teaching inner city youth. Or, I don't I don't believe. <laughs> but. But he's in high school? I only could bear to watch the trailers for these. Oh, okay, great. And there was not a trailer for Ernest Goes to School. Because I was like, is it like a Never Been Kissed vibe, right? She's Julia Gulia? No. No, that's Wedding Singer. Oh, now, right. Now, now, I mean, no. But... The, hello, fellow teens. Yes. <laughs> right? Know what I mean? Yeah, he's just like at school being annoying. Yeah. So maybe we have to... No. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, slam Dunk Ernest, Ooh. where... Air Bud. 
air, yeah, there, there's a lot of direct like, oh, I see where this is coming from. But in this one, the angel that is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar okay. grants him magic sneakers so he can in wacky hijinks win at basketball. Next up, Ernest goes to Africa. Uh, yeah, no one should watch this. <laughs> Don't do it. It's the black spot in the franchise. The black spot! And then, strangely enough, last Ernest movie, uh -huh. Ernest in the Army. Now? No. <laughs> Ernest in the Army now. No. Oh my God. I want to dress up like that. Oh, that's a great also before and after. Great before <laughs> and after. Get the, the jean vest and then I need like a curly mop wig and a piano tie and just like fatigues, but they're cut off. Oh my God. But yes. Ernest Scared Stupid. Which I think was pretty funny. I had a good time. I had a good time. There's just enough mugging. Like the plot is actually more plotted than Ernest Goes to Camp. Okay, interesting. Ernest Goes to Camp is your classic corporate baddies are going to demolish our camp. <clears throat> cultural appropriation, inappropriate Native American situation. Oh. It's, you know, it's not great. Uh, oh no, what are we gonna do? We'll fight back with smoke bombs. And the woman has to go get an injunction because she's the only one that has a brain. Right. Like the nurse is like, I got, you got, fucking, you fucking idiots. <laughs> They're like assaulting them with, you know, whatever. Right. And, and like, like setting things on fire. And she's like, God damn it. I mean, she should have been, but she's not. But <laughs> I did it. I got an injunction from the judge. I'm like, getting it done, girl. Yeah. <laughs> getting it done. We got it. We got it. The judge issued a restraining order. <laughs> but yes, yeah, Ernest Scared Stupid. Halloween night, troll, or, well, it starts in its Hocus Pocus. I mean, it basically is Hocus Pocus, right? It's witch trial -y, the history of the town, years and years ago, these trolls, and they were banished, and they were, you know, whatever. He was eating children and turning them, I mean, this Into is wooden some next sculptures. level fucking shit, right? I'm, he turns children, this is the troll's plan, he takes children, turns them into small wooden statues in terrified, I'm dying positions. Yeah. <laughs> Puts them in a tree. As like a little menagerie. That powers, powers fertilizes the tree. Yeah. his droopy egg sack Audrey tube yeah, children. Yeah, I was going to say, it's very Little Shop of Horrors. And the power of the Halloween moon hatches his full-grown troll babies. Yes. Intense. Yes. And the common themes between the Ernest movies are you know, Rube Goldberg-esque, and these these increase as the movies go on. Gotcha. Like, again, Ernest goes to camp. It's fairly straight. I mean, okay. it's a full broad comedy. He's falling off ladders. It's hilarious. Things are happening. But, like, they get progressively more bizarre. Okay. And I think that's when it's at its best. Right, when, when it's, it's really campy. It's such a cartoon. It's surreal. Right. Yeah, I'm a man who has just found his parking space in the fast lane. Who knows what lies ahead for such a man? We've entered Looney Tunes. Yes. And the impossible is happening, and it's hilarious. And what I think I would say, particularly about Ernest, in, at least in relation to the three that we're talking about tonight, right. is that it's the smartest. The writing. The most references. There's the most, like... It's the most specific in its tone or and or unique in its tone yes but even beyond that there's like literal references and like jokes that are cerebral for like adults would get whereas like there's like shakespearean references Ren, romans botswanian lend me your tree 
Whereas, like, in the army now, dumber. Like, maybe much, there's a John Wayne dumber. reference here and there, but, like, no, for no, the most no, part, no, no. it's just much him dumber. doing shticks. It's Polly Shore being an idiot. Right. Searching for a boy in high school is as useless as searching for meaning in a Polly Shore movie. In this location. Danielle Stern being an idiot. <laughs> in the woods. Yeah. Whereas Ernest is absolutely being an idiot, and that is largely the joke, but the idiocy, it's kind of Dumb and Dumber-esque, where you're like, this is dumb. It's and intentional. Yet it's, yes, it's, it's very intentional. much more intentional. And, like, it starts, the opening credits are all references to old horror movies. It's doing the, right. you know, the, the font. It's setting a tone, and it knows exactly what it's talking about. Yeah. And whether or not you like it or not... That's your, you know, decision, but like it knows what it's attempting. It's a, it's more of a parody, I mm -hmm, think, than mm -hmm. the other two are. Yeah. Which is helpful because I think in a lot of ways, otherwise it would really fail. The filmmaking is more simplistic. It's a little bit more. But there are a lot of, there are quite a few sight gags. Sure. And. Well, the FX are great. Oh my God. So, so we're watching it. Oh, right. We get to the big, like, cause I remember these trolls being so goddamn scary. <laughs> I was so afraid of them. Sure. They're gooey, they're oozing, like his earlobes grow. He gets like little like, mm, you know, like yeah. antenna. Yeah. Like I remember being like, I want to barf. And also I'm obsessed with what's happening. Like I love this so much. Then all of his children are born and they're all fucking weird looking. And in the viewing party, I was like, this is really reminding me of Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Like this is really, you know, like you do. Just the aesthetic is so specific. Yeah. And I was like, is this the Chodo Brothers? Like this has to be the Chodo Brothers. And it is, and isn't that fucking great? <laughs> isn't that so fabulous that they did an Ernest movie? That's crazy. You don't know, but they did like Critters. It was like a Gremlins ripoff essentially. Um. That, like, you know, a direct to video. Or maybe it was, maybe one of them was in the theaters. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. Where did they come up with this stuff? So, you know, like, shout out to these special effects because if this was all, I mean, I'm a broken record, but if this was all CGI, oh, it would have really been who bad. cares? It would have been really dumb. I realized, um, I've been watching, like, these old documentaries about, like, special VFX and stuff like that. What's missing is, you know, essentially they were performing a magic trick live in camera. Sure. It's not happening in real time, obviously, because you have to get everything just right, but We've plotted and planned just exactly how this needs to be shot, so it's the most magical and amazing in your in your brain. Right. And it's and the actors within the scene are reacting to it. There's a wonderment to, yes. and you know it's fake, but there's a wonderment to. Um, they just they just tricked me and pulled off a magic trick in front of my eyes, and I'm so excited. Like I, I think though that there's somehow because it is real, like literally mm. physical, that. Viscous. Your brain, I think it's easier to forget that it, you know it's fake. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, I think you have to remind yourself more, yeah. this is fake, don't be afraid. Right, right. I mean, obviously, especially as a child. Oh, yeah. But, like, when it's CGI, it you're like, well, this is fake. There's a coldness. It just doesn't seem, like, you can tell that it's fake. There's no goo. Even if it looks... So shockingly realistic. Oh, Avatar, the water really moves like water. Okay. There was an interesting talking head in the last action, in search of the last action hero documentary where they were saying, yeah, Avatar, you know, it's whatever, James Cameron, he's revolutionizing, whatever. But they were like, but has he ever done, has he ever topped having that helicopter go under the, the freeway underpass in Terminator 2? Oh. That was like the height of, you can't fucking do this. It's a real full-scale helicopter and they fly it under and it's and you're watching it like god and i'm like no he hasn't no. topped that he hasn't you know what i mean yeah so so yeah bring back the goo yeah let's make that a shirt Ooh, bring back the goo oh you're so cute <laughs> Is so, it like a union picket sign? Like, bring back the go! It's just, it's just, it's just Sally Field. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Probably because we we were watching season five, but Jim Barney's face is such a rubber band 
bubblegum, you know. Oh, well, yeah, well, well. Oh, 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 oh. It was yeah. really giving me detox, lip syncing oh, 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 vibes. Yeah. His mouth, his, Jim Varney is so fabulous. Oh, yeah. I cannot get enough of his voice. Mm. I'm going to pause you yeah. just for a PSA yeah. to say make sure to subscribe because season five of RuPaul's Drag Race hey! is finally coming it's soon. It's coming soon. After summer camp. So you got to subscribe. That's true. And share. Oh. I meant to bring up detox for that purpose. <laughs> anyway, sorry. His voice and his absolutely talent. Not. Absolutely. Fabulous. Well, I, I think I as a kid, I knew, drag. I knew. Oh, my God. I mean, yes. So guess who's not in Ernest Goes to Camp? Any of his alter egos. Oh no. Boo! Oh my, I'm afraid. Sure, I'm scared. Everybody in here, box one is scared. It looks like curtain. This place is just screaming for Drake. Don't worry about the Ottomans. Boo! Shame on you, movie. Yeah. I love his B. Arthur neck brace mother. Young man, could you please open that gate? I left my car running outside. Ma'am, can you tell me how you got to this gate? The visitor's area is on the other side of the prison. If you had any remorse at all for the horror you put your own mother through, you'd open that gate. Okay, okay. All right, let's open the east gate. The doctor told me I'd only have to wear these until after the surgery. Oh. <laughs> who's displeased with every single thing that's going on, was obsessed with her. Yeah. And and the other, the lady with the red hair and... Ernest! Direct hit. Way to go, Ernest. Do you smell fish? You know, the Genghis Khan, it's not great. And um, the Caesar, you know, he was a classically trained, like he did Shakespeare, like he was a classically trained actor. He did stand up. He actually started at the comedy store, which oh. is funny because Polly Shore's mom started the comedy store. Oh. And he like grew up there. Wow. So that's funny. Yeah. No, I loved the drag or like the multiple personalities or whatever. It was very Robin Williams y. And they were friends. They I both love that. start they both started at the comedy store. Oh wow. Yeah. There you go. Those are always the fun parts, right? Like they, Right. Well, and, and as a kid, I'm going, yay, he's dressing up and this is silly. As an adult, I'm going, is this happening? <laughs> is this a fantasy? Right, right. Is the kid seeing this? The kid responds to it. Oh, you know, you know, not this one not or this whatever. Not this one again. So, it's ha so he's experiencing this. Yeah. <laughs> we came, we saw, we took the high ground, even though some of us are very tired. Trolls, is it? Oh, great. I have to defend the fort with a multiple personality. But yes, all of his multiple characters and the like, oh man, maybe I should do that as a Halloween costume. I was going to dress up like Ernest, but maybe I should dress up like his mother. I mean, I really love that. To get the neck brace. The, the neck brace. I mean, no one will know what it is, but... Um, you will. I will. And now everyone who's watched this will. Yes. <laughs> so yes, he is a crown jewel in American cinema, honestly. Jim Varney. I think he's a, an amazing actor. I, 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 I feel that. I, I really was impressed by him. Uh, he Great facial expressions, great timing, great voice work. Gets, great... gets you. I cried at the end of this movie. Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler alert. I mean, it involved a dog, so I was primed. What's the matter, Ernest? There's nothing in that tree for me. Rimshot. 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 Oh, where have you been? Did you miss your daddy? Yes. I cried at the end of this film because Ernest was sad. Yeah. So good on you, Jim Varney. Um, oh, also of note, Rimshot, not in Ernest Goes to Camp. That's it, I'm Get not watching it. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> no. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Absolutely not. Another, get ready for season five. Get ready for season five. It's going to be great. But yes, Rimshot, his Jack Russell Terrier? It Something, looked like it. I, yeah. I, I, um, you know, I, I, so Ernest and his beloved Rimshot. Oh, hey, Vern. Just brushing up on my advanced water sports. Yeah, Vern, I've got to be ready to ride the waves. So stand back and allow my flume to zoom. 
Well, and I don't know if this is on purpose, but there were a few like reused sound effects that were really. Sure. I am such a sucker for fourth wall breaking sound effects. Okay. Like, you know. <laughs> I guess that does break the fourth wall. <laughs> yes. And there was a few in this where it was the same. Ah! Yes. Like eagle call. Ah! Yeah. yeah. There's an old pioneer way of. Is he serious? I'm afraid so. Oh, all right. What have you done? Yeah. And uh, they kept reusing it, really made me laugh, and that reminded me of Almost Heroes, another, another movie that might belong on this list, honestly. Come on, you damn bird! Come and get me! Like, you know how everything that would be fucking annoying and stupid when Chris Farley does it, it's the funniest thing you've ever seen. I do understand that. It's very that. Yeah. Um, it's very I would that. say, I guess for me as a child, a lot of the Adam Sandler movies were... Big deal. A big deal. Big. But those were popular. Those were, those popular. were not those like, were oh, only Andrew liked that. No, it was everyone. Uh, Stop looking at me, Swan. You know. <laughs> it's still that 30 is bag correct. <laughs> Everybody on? Good. Great. Grand. Wonderful. No yelling on the bus. So, quick commercial break, and we'll be back with more trolls. Oh my god! Oh my god! It's the it's the key change that really gets me every time. Every time. Oh my god! Nilbog, you still haven't seen that whole movie. No. Oh my god, it's wild. And so then they find this tree to build a treehouse in. Oh my gosh, this build in the treehouse montage. One treehouse under construction. Crank her up. All right, this is really working. This is great. And it's wa it's the wackiest, most production designed treehouse you've ever seen. Yeah. It's Just cool. they make a pizza gun. Right. Let's go! Wacky stuff. Just like Katy Perry. <laughs> oh, and, and Eartha Kitt. Oh, because Eartha Kitt. No, I'm Lady Gaga. Oh. Um, so Eartha Kitt uh, is the other weirdo in town. I mean, sure. everyone's weird in this town. Sure. But it's... She, they're the weirdos. Right. 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 That everyone ostracized. Yeah. Yeah. And um, she has a bunch of like metal installation She seems art. to be some fabulous cunt who makes desert metal art yeah. in her front yard yeah. and has a, a... She's ready for Mad Max Fury Road, that's for sure. She has a homemade flamethrower. Ah! I mean, it looks like she's living in, in the, the junkyard in nothing but trouble. I feel like um, there was a pretty aggressive junkyard in Brave Little Toaster. Oh, well. Don't they like... That's where he gets pulled out of the magnet and yeah. it was terrifying and horrible and I cried every time. Every time. Every fucking time. No wonder we're so... Because we've got like Toy Story and Brave Little Toaster. It's like, you, not only do you have to care about the fate of the world, the rainforest, global warming. Yep, Fern Gully. Your parents yep. getting divorced. Yep, your parents getting murdered tragically somehow. Tragically dying somehow. You should also worry about inanimate objects <laughs> and have empathy for them. I was the top of the line, out of sight, out of mind, so much for fortune and fame. Yikes. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And our dogs and our pets talk and have adventures on their own and right. will hopefully find their way back to you. But like that was oh. exciting. I mean, oh my God. Talk about also crying. Every time. Every time. Dance. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't lie down. Don't lie down. Sorry. I can't make it. Why not? Of course you can make it. Try, Shadow. Please try. I just can't. Sally Field. I'm crying right now thinking about it. Right. So yes, Eartha Kitt is living in her best life, making art in her own junkyard. Yep. Ma'am, I'm just here to pick up all this garbage. Got no garbage here. Only the expressions of the soul. And she finds out that, that they have built a treehouse in her yard, Well, apparently. and she's the... I mean, how... Why would that get to the end of the movie? How old 
world is Eartha Kitt supposed to be? I don't understand. Because we start, and it seems to be the 1600s. Right. So it's an allegory for the Salem witch trials. Right. It was, like, again, like Hocus Pocus, right? It was kind of They're wearing vibes. bonnets. Yeah. You know, Jim Barney's dressed up like goody goody schmuck, whatever, right. preacher, you know, yeah. and <laughs> damn you to hell. And there's the same little girl running through the woods. And, but in this oh, one, the right. little girl's like trying not to laugh. Like she's clearly like. Oh, she clearly the is. The camera's yes, chasing me. Yes, she's so excited. Oh, oh no. no! Oh no, I'm scared. Oh no, troll! <laughs> Supposedly. She was a child? Eartha Kitt was one of the children at the time whose other children Who were stolen or, yeah. or turned into. And she's spent her entire life making it her goal to... Right. I mean, I know this is like 91, but... Well, it's not 290 years later, unless she is also a witch. I mean, witch, I mean... I mean, I'm into it. They say that I'm a witch. So yes, Eartha Kitt's the lore master, the woman getting it done. Right, the... and he comes, oh, well, she said that, you know... Uh, some, the lore says that some idiot like me was going to come and say, He can only be awakened on the night before Halloween. Like tonight. When a whorl. Like you. Places his hand on a tree like this and says, Yea, I call thee forth, Trantor. But what are the chances of that happening? So stupid. So then, of course, the troll comes to life and it starts eating the children, or turning the children into wooden statues. Very Pompeii. Um, it was very Pompeii. <laughs> and terrifying. Yeah, terrifying. And, of course, none of the parents believe them. And it's like, you know, we're at a... It's very Hocus Pocus, I guess. <laughs> Hocus Pocus came out after. Wow. Good for them. Whoever John that Cherry? Is. Yeah. Good for you, John Cherry. Yeah. You really made something out of what was nothing. Right. You know. That was nonsense. <laughs> well, I mean, like, to start by making a random commercial oh, oh, in yes, your backyard. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so I see what you mean. Yes. To yes, this. To this. The inspiration for Hocus Pocus. You know. Bravo. Bravo. There's talk of air rights. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're not really on your place. More like above it. Couldn't we talk air rights? Yes. How many times now have air rights shown up in a movie? What the fuck? I got a real big laugh out of... So there's those kind of Laurel and Hardy guys, the guys who sell all the stuff. Yes, right. right yes. So they're in all the movies. Okay. Of they course. show up in different, you know, in the in Ernest goes to camp. They're the chefs at the camp, and they're making gross food and wacky schmacky or whatever. And Ernest goes to jail. They're the like security guards at the bank. So like they, they're a common theme as well. Gotcha. So in this one, they're the everything store. Right, but also the like, oh, we'll sell you. Yeah, we have. Well, they're always Troll. like the, you know, trying, trying to, to... Trying to make it rich. Yeah. Trying, yeah. To, trying to, yeah. Or they've got some scheme or scheme. some outrageous thing they're trying to accomplish. Sure, and, you know, sure. they're along for the ride. But I did get a big laugh out of... He's collecting... He's, well, this is Troll Repellent, and this is this, and da 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 Does that include the giant album with every Troll love song ever written? Do rattlesnakes kiss carefully? You bet! And it's like <laughs> literally the... It's like, now that's what I call Troll love, or whatever. I got a big laugh out of it. Yeah, but like, like that's what I'm saying too. Shut up, Pam. That's a smarter joke yeah. than like the, some of the jokes in In the Army Now or whatever. 100%. You know what I mean? 100%. Like it's a different level of writing yeah. where the writing itself was funnier or smarter. Yeah. And also his performance is great. Yeah. So speaking of '90s nostalgia, so so there's uh yeah one girl in the group. Right. She's got a classic hang in their cat sweater. I Express. sort of want it. I think you kind of should. I'm really having a good time revisiting the production design of these early 90s sure. movies, right? Her room kind of was giving me Hello, Hello Mary, Mary Lou. Lou vibes. She just needed a carousel horse. A creepy carousel horse. You look beautiful. Most girls are just into horses. <laughs> uh, yeah. But it was the pastels that like the last vestiges of like that Rachel Ashwell shabby chic yep. floral lacy weird dolls. Oh my god. And remember her mom looked like Judy Garland? 
The spitting image. It was like, what happened? It was really... Where? How? Mm. What? Yeah. It was very Papa. <laughs> it was very that. It was very strange. Out of nowhere, it didn't mean anything. It was it like, wait a minute. Be, and then we yeah. couldn't not see it. And it wasn't like it was a Halloween costume that she was dressed no, up as I mean, Judy Garland. I mean, that would be great. I mean, like, that, that was probably a missed opportunity. Like, put her in some braids and a little gingham yeah. Yeah. dress. Well, speaking of Halloween costumes, another common theme okay. in 90s Halloween themed movies. Is a costume party for adults? A costume party for adults. Which I think they should bring back. Where they're all like, woo, Collectively, crazy, we should then... decide that we bring this back. But doesn't it make it seem like they're all then too vulnerable? The kids? No, the adults to being taken over by witches and or So you're saying trolls. if we throw a Halloween party for adults where we all dress up, we got to look out because there might be witches or Only or if trolls. we have children. Okay, well then that's fine. But no, I do miss this. But, but also, um, like, looking at the cultural stamp of Halloween costumes. Oh, yes. And there's like, there's so many Native American, like I'm dressed like an Indian outfits. And then there was that one guy that was just caveman. I'm naked. Remember? Oh. He just had the loincloth. Oh, like a loincloth in a club. Like, Love that. That's a great slutty gay costume. It's great. Like Indian costumes and chics. Oh. Lots of chics. Oh, yeah. I took a sheet and I had a headband. Like a, yeah. <laughs> and I... Yeah. Oh, and I Dream of Genie. There was an I Dream of Genie in this. There was. And I believe there was one in Hocus Pocus as well. Well, she has the I Dream of Genie Madonna hair. Oh, you're right. She's Madonna with the cone boob. Madonna. Cone boobs. Yeah, Madonna. you're right. But it's the same hair. That's true. So that's what the visual in my head was like, ah, oh, yes. Mm. Hey everyone, it's April in the editing room here, and I just had to share this absolutely bizarre revelation that I had. So I'm editing Ernest Scared Stupid, and I know that I recognize this pizza outfit. It's too specific. It's not any one brand, and I have some unlocked memory. I've seen this costume before, and I just can't figure it out. But guess what? I did. So a movie that very nearly ended up on this year's summer camp list is Men at Work from 1990, starring Emilio Estevez, Charlie Sheen, and the incomparable Keith David. And guess what? It's the same freaking costume. The page boy hat, the pepperoni epaulets. I mean, this is, this is pure madness. What, what has happened? Yeah, no, we really should review this movie. It's great. Anyway, I could not fathom how this would be the exact same costume. How is that possible? They're both so specific. So I went to the IMDb collaboration feature, which if you haven't tried it, is quite fabulous, and typed in both titles of the movies to see if it was at all possible that someone had worked on both of these movies, giving them a reason to have reused this insane pizza costume. And guess what? It's the same freaking costume designer. So they just reused the outfit, but they put some pepperonis on the mom's face. My mind is blown. Sean Barry, if you're out there, I may be the only person on the planet other than yourself that connected these two pepperoni dots. But there you go. One of my favorite scenes and the most surreal and bizarre scenes is the big chase. Oh. The trolls chasing yeah. after them. They're driving away in the truck. Right. <laughs> Ernest gets out yep. to fight the troll. <laughs> Get away from me! Who's driving? Who is driving this truck? Rim shot! <laughs> it's just sitting there. It's like instead of the adult woman who's taking care of business in most of these movies, in this movie, it's Rimshot. Oh, yes, of course. Like, he's yeah. like, I will take care of you. You are a child. His dog is his parent. His yep. dog is his guardian. I don't believe it, Rimshot. He's pulling against 200 horsepower. I put it in reverse. I feel like that's not an unusual no. theme. No, yeah, 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 exactly. And just the way it's shot is very funny. It's very just funny. like it's clearly on a track, you know, you're or right. whatever. Well, and you're, because you are like, wait, who's wait, driving the who's car? who's driving then? the car? Oh my God, but a bump. <laughs> well, and then Ripshot like straight up murders the troll. I mean, he doesn't because it has to come back for the third act, but like just runs him down. <laughs> Shot. Way to go. 
and then puts it back in fruit. But again, kind. <laughs> but again, imagine this scene, the CGI dog. No. Like there's something about a dumb fake paw, yeah. you know, coming yeah. in. CGI is not conducive to comedy, to telling a joke. Sure. There's something, there's a disconnect where the intent is lost yeah. somehow. Yeah. Because like CGI dog arm changing the, no. the drive shaft. No, no isn't funny. Mm -mm. It's like, oh, okay, it's a CGI dog, so it's not real anyway, so it could fly around and do whatever, and who cares? Sure. But having a real dog, me, 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 like, it's, it's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I'm even just thinking now of that horrible Thor movie that you didn't watch, although you did see it on the plane. Right. Uh, tangentially, where they had, like, the, the goats. The goats. Would have been funny if they were real. Could have been funny if they were real. Yeah. Like, I just watched Top Secret, and... There's a whole scene with- I just watched Top Secret. You did? Wasn't it hilarious? hilarious? Did you love it? Yes. Okay, imagine that scene with the cow with the boots on. CGI'd cow. It's not funny. Not funny. He'll say come. Okay, let's move out. All right, let's go. Double time. with the cow with the boots on was really <laughs> or or the horse that's singing la 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 and it's like a fake like puppet horse remember they're they're riding in the back of that cart and the horse is like <coughs> oh sorry sorry oh yes sorry <laughs> <coughs> is he all right oh we caught a call the other day and he's just a little horse it's like, but CGI'd horse is yeah. not funny. No, not funny. We've yeah. cracked something here. I, yeah, I Maybe like CGI killed comedy. Could Maybe, be. Honestly, though. Could be. In our bear bear conversation, that's like the most apples to apples that I've thought of exactly. at the moment, you know? Because honestly, even a man in a bear suit, funnier than a CGI bear. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Wasn't Top Secret great? Yes, I really enjoyed I was like, you know what? Yes, into these kinds of movies. <laughs> exact humor. So yes, no one believes Ernest. Oh my goodness, we have to track down this troll. You know, when he's in the lineup of all the like the costume, like the costume contest, and then it's like the troll, and they're like, "Wow, you really went all out." Or yeah, whatever. right, 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 right. <laughs> Stupid. That, that joke is never not funny to me. And the Halloween dance, the big showdown. Ernest has figured out the troll's kryptonite. Meak. And it is meak. <laughs> meak. I remember that thing. It was what's the funniest thing as a kid. Meak. Yeah. Meak. I bet you thought I couldn't find any this time of year. Meak. I know it's milk. Come on. Like, I think part of my love of Ernest is it made me feel smart. Sure. You know, that was like a fun added yeah. like. But no, it turns out it is, of course, milk. Milk. Because the troll is what? Lactose intolerant. Lactose intolerant. Oh, no wonder he's got so much mucus. Mucus. The mucus is here. You mucus. It's not slime. It's mucus. <laughs> that is not slime. What? You are secreting mucus. Uh, I would would like let's say it's crystal method. Does a drag earnest? I'm sorry, I had to get there. Yeah. Is that something? I think I want to see it. As like a snatch game or just like a referential no, thing? just like I I dressed up like drag earnest, but it's fashion. Sure. Somehow. I could see that. I would love to know which drag queen would know. That's true. I don't know. They just, I thought of Crystal Method just because. I get it. I get she, it. You know, takes. She could like do Freddy the aesthetic Krueger, and like make Freddy it. Krueger, right. Exactly. Like, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. How do we take earnest and I don't know. I'm intrigued. I would love to see that. 
there was a great Viva Variety. It was like a like a fake variety show with all our favorite people, like from Wet Hot and stuff like that. Oh, great. And they did a sketch with Jim Varney where it was the importance of being Ernest P. Worrell. Great. And who better we thought to bring to life Oscar Wilde's incomparable comedy of manners than Ernest himself, actor Jim Varney. Ladies and gentlemen, Viva Variety proudly presents Oscar Wilde's The Importance of Being Earnest. I say, Cousin Vernon, would you be so kind as to spare me at least one of those cucumber sandwiches? Uh, know what I mean. And so he's talking like fancy pants Oscar Wilde, you know what I mean? Do you remember the film in which Ernest goes to camp? Uh, <laughs> the name of the film escapes me now. <laughs> now look deeply inside yourself and ask yourself that question. Does Vern know what I mean? <laughs> know what I mean, Vern? It was like, oh, did they write this for me? This might have been written for me. It was, it was a, you know, converging that is, that is, yeah. of ideas I enjoyed. All they needed was Kenneth Brenna. Oh and... my God. <laughs> but yes, the final showdown at the treehouse. Yeah. The troll. All the egg sacs are pulsating. Yes. And it, this looks great. Dripping. Yeah. And it's disgusting. And I'm like, what am I watching a Cronenberg movie? <laughs> This is so vile. I love it. His right, the, the, everything starts to and it's even grosser than it was before. And all of the trolls start attacking and and everyone is so interesting looking. Yeah. And they have like their own backstory. You can tell that it's oh, like, yeah. and this is this troll. Yeah. And this is that troll. I'll show you the, the killer clown. Well, we should probably watch killer clowns from outer space because honestly it's great. But bravo. I, yeah. like the, That just tickles me on such a specific level that the Chono brothers like did this movie. That's so great and weird. And like at some point, because they're so, they're all so weird and some of them are kind of punk looking and whatever. Like it felt like a guar show. Like they were just going to start like guars. Like they're a band, but they're also like performing art gotcha. and they have all these insane costumes and they would have like fake dicks and they'd oh. like piss on the audience oh. or other fluids you know not right real, really, but, but like yeah. you know yeah. blood and it was like everyone had these characters and they were like crazy blah, 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 looking so like there you go you know maybe Ernest is a big guar fan <laughs> maybe or they are a big Ernest fan Ooh. so right of course the milk saves the day everyone fills up they, their super soakers super, of course the, the 90s super, so yep. super soakers pizza guns like oh it all makes sense now of <laughs> yeah. course of course cartons of, uh, of milk and water balloons of milk and uh, whatever uh, oh what a world yeah. I'm surprised they didn't make that joke, honestly. Mm, that's fair. Oh, what a world, oh, what a world. We defeat the trolls, and all of the wooden children come back to life, including Eartha Kitt's sub siblings? Right. Francis? Sister Francis? Is that you? My sister, my sister. From, you know, olden times, and now she's old and they're young, and wow, this is gonna be complicated. Uh, she's maybe 300 years old? I like that she's a witch. And they say that I'm a witch and that I weave a spell. What if she's a witch who wanted the kids back so that she could suck their life force and re-young herself? Ooh, that's interesting. Or maybe she has been slowly one every 30 years. Just because she's, she's got to keep I got to keep myself alive. alive so that I can save my... I mean, I like it. I like it. And then one of them be, is the Sanderson sisters, mm. and they, or I don't know, but. Yeah, you know, what would have, the only thing that could have made Hocus Pocus better, Eartha Kitt. Absolutely. Like, I'm not saying replace anyone. No. But add. Add Eartha Kitt somehow. She also can put a spell on you. A musical number with Eartha Kitt? Absolutely. Oh my God. Where was that? Honestly, why didn't she sing I'd Rather Be a Witch? in the middle of that Halloween party to distract them from troll sure, happenings. Sure, sure. I'd rather be burned as a witch than never be burned at all. I don't know. She's got this crazy fucking Doc Brown wig on. It's great stuff. It really it's was. It's really yeah. great stuff. Yeah. Um, so, so I would say, honestly, worth a watch. It's, again, 90 minutes. 90 I don't think minutes. there's any movie in this this episode at least. Oh no. That is over 94 minutes. Nope. And I would say if you're gonna watch 
an Ernest movie. Honestly, it's this one and Ernest Goes to Jail were my two, okay. my top two. Huh. Uh, Christmas and Camp are still fun, but those, these, Jail and this one are the most like surreally bizarre where it just like it's it's gone off onto a different level. I mean it was wacky. It was but it wacky. was a, in a fun way. Yeah. I did enjoy it. Yeah. So, so cheers to Jim Barney. Yeah. <laughs>